Hi, I'm Matt Claire from the CTLET at Brock University. I want to go through a couple of different ways to do assessment and evaluation through Isaac Sakai. There are two main tools, tests and quizzes, and assignments. And they both have their own specific purpose inside your online course. They're both about having electronic evaluation of student work. So you can turn these tools on, as you can any others in Sakai, through Site Info, Edit Tools. And alphabetically, let's look at the Assignments tool first. So here I am in the Assignments tool, I can click Add. And this is an assignment that I want students to submit to me electronically. So I'm going to call it uh, Essay as a title. I've got three dates to set here. An open date, when students begin reviewing the outline of this assignment and potentially submitting it. The due date, when it's the last moment that I'll submit things. A tip I often like to give is if it's going to be due at midnight, make it due at 11.55 p.m. Otherwise, when you set it to midnight, which is technically part of the first minute of the next day, when that gets presented on tools like the schedule or calendar tool in Sakai, it can be misleading to some students as to when the actual item is due. Speaking of students who may accidentally or otherwise submit late, there is an accept until option. That allows you to take an assignment uh, until that date, but they'll be flagged as late. Especially when you're doing things like late night submissions, it's a lot easier to accept that uh, submission from a student, flag it as late and deal, deal with it later, than get a lot of emails or contact from students trying to figure out what they should do once that date is passed. Those are our three dates. Student commission, submissions can, can come in many forms. The simplest for an instructor to mark is inline submissions. That asks a student to compose their submission in a text box like this, or they can copy and paste it from Microsoft Word with all the formatting except for important things like images and footnotes. And that way it comes into the instructor as a web page, you can evaluate it. The other option is to have an attachment submitted. Attachments can be in any form, it's 50 megabytes or less, and it can be multiple files. A essay in this situation could come in Microsoft Word, Claris Works, uh, Pages, PDF. The important thing is you need to be able to open it on your end as an instructor, so be certain that you aren't able to open a certain format or a format that you prefer, make that clear to your students and your instructions. So I'm going to allow both. I'm going to grade this out of 10 points. Here's what I can put in my instructions. I can type them in. Or I can attach a PDF or other important information. Down here are some two checkboxes I can choose from. I can add an announcement about the assignment the moment the open date comes around. And I can add an honor pledge. This literally does everything a checkbox can do to prevent uh, dishonesty amongst your students. It asks them to check a box saying that they've neither given nor received any unacknowledged assistance on this assignment. Scrolling down, we have a section for grading. So we can associate this with the existing gradebook item or make a new one. Let's make a new one. And there's some options for notifications, spot to add more files, and uh, model answers and other items. But I think we're ready to post this assignment. Let me go into another question and show you an example of some student work submitted already. So I'll go into my sample course here, and it's assignments. And this is an assignment list view of the assignments tool. And on assignment two, we have one submission here, so I'm going to click on grade. Here's a list of all my students, and I can see a certain Matt Clare has already submitted his assignment. If I click on that, here's the inline submission he typed in and the file he attached. Here's my spot to put in my comments, and I can attach another file. So I could download that Word document that's attached, uh, do things like track changes in, put in my comments, and reattach it and send it back. Along with this grade here, which I'm going to increase to 9, and return the assignment to the student. That's one way to deal with student submissions in the assignments tool. Another really nice way, and why Sakai is one of the best tools for the online submission of any kind of file, is there's this download all option, which will zip up all of your files and all your student submissions into one zip file, downloads to your computer, you double click it, open it up, and then there's a folder for every single student with their submission inside it. If anyone's done electronic submission before, you may be familiar with getting a whole bunch of files called Essay. And this way, you, can st you still have all those files titled Essay, but they're in their, the student's respective folder, so you know who you're dealing with. Imagine there's another tool, Tests and Quizzes. Tests and Quizzes 
has all kinds of permutations and things you can do with it. I have a number of quizzes created in here in the pending assessments. Once they're all created, I can go into their settings and set a number of things like when it's available, if I want to use it in past before students can take it, I can do a timed assessment, how do I want to present it, what kind of feedback do I want students to get? Do I want them to see what the correct response is? Do I not want to? Do I want them to be able to see what they submitted and the correct response or just what they submitted? By default, grading is almost always anonymous, but you could have that so you can see who's assigned your grading. And when it's ready to go, you click Save Settings and Publish, and that's submitted to uh, or presented to the students as an active quiz. Then you can go and review the scores and see what each student submitted or go on the questions and see what they're responding for each question. Testing quizzes also have the concept of question pools. These can be really effective because it allows you to reuse questions from quiz to quiz. Question types inside Sakai can be multiple choice, which it can score for you. It can be matching short answer, which it can't quite score for you, but it can try. And a whole paragraph questions. You can do things like have a nine multiple choice questions and one last essay at the end, which you, the instructor, can mark. And you can also do things that create big question pools with 50 questions or more, and then say you'd like Sakai to give a subset of those 50 questions, just 10, randomly drawn for each student, to make sure students get unique quizzes every single time they take the quiz. Daunting, I know, lots of settings, and very customizable for your specific task. If having all those boxes and settings is a little daunting, one really nice thing about Sakai is you can use the Quick Create tool, and hit Quick Create, and then use this markup to format your question and put in your multiple choice, putting an asterisk beside the correct answer, and write up more like a regular assignment you may do in Microsoft Word, and then cut and paste in there and go from there. Those are two ideas for online assessment and evaluation of students through Sakai. Hopefully it's giving you some ideas. If you have any questions, please contact the CTLET via www.brocky.ca. CTLET.